Folks, this is the man. That's, that's a rare privilege that everyone can hear him. Everyone can see him. It's a pity, too, not only a rare privilege to hear him and see him, but it's also disappointing that everybody's not allowed to listen, to hear and see this dynamic individual. This room right here that you're sitting in today has been dedicated to him. This is a man here that just a few years ago, approximately three years ago, scratched a few marks in the sand to Terrell Jones and said, this is my idea. And people around his hometown laughed at him and considered it a big joke. And he stood over in this vast empire the other day in one of his buildings, and he said three years ago, people said this was a joke. People laughed at it because it did appear to be a joke. And now you'd set four football fields down into this building where he paid cash for because he was of above average initiative. Not above average intelligence, as you've been told all day today and you saw in the film. He only went to the eighth grade, but he had above average desire. And Andrew Carnegie once said, show me an average man with above average desire and I'll show you a man that will make history. And this is what this man's done. He also said, show me a man that can make a quick decision, act on that decision and stick to that decision and I'll show you a man that will make a fortune. Well, here's a man here that can make an instantaneous decision on any matter that comes up. And I was at a staff meeting one time and they diddled around about 40 seconds on some issue and uh, he found out what it was and he said, okay, do this, that, that, and said, next issue. He can't stand to see people lollygog around. You know what? He believes this, and Cicero once said it, more is lost by indecision than by wrong decision. And he believes that all you gotta do is be right 51% of the time to succeed. And this is what he's done. The whole thing about it, about 99% of his decisions have been correct. And this is why he's built a vast empire. And not only has he had that going for him, but the man's got a heart bigger than he is. He's got a heart bigger than this room that you're sitting in here tonight. It's a true example of his following. Talk to anybody in Turner Enterprises and they'll tell you they love the man. He's got a magnetism about him because he's got love in his heart. And you'll see in Purpose One, Orbit One, what's happened to be Purpose, and they say you gotta get right on the inside first before you're ever gonna get right on the outside. Before you're ever gonna excel in your business or our business or any other business, you gotta get right on the inside. And this man's right on the inside. He's got love in his heart. He's got compassion for his fellow man. And that's why his personal purpose in life and the purpose of Dare to Be Great is to encircle the world with love, understanding, and unity. And this is the man behind it all. This is the man most wrote about, most read about, most talked about man in America today and very soon the world. I want you to help me welcome this time the chairman of the board of all Turner Enterprises, Mr. Glenn W. Turner. I mean, never heard me speak before. Good, I'm gonna walk your mind. <laughs> Hello there. Bobby Lee Trammell here. Y'all met him yet? No. Let me introduce him to you. He is the president of one of our most growing company, Soundcott, which is a record recording company. We'll be producing movies later on. It's got a slogan, if it's hot, it's on Soundcott. <laughs> now, Bobby is a country and western artist by his own right. He recorded in 1962 the Arkansas Twist, also the Moses Girl, and both of them were two million sellers. He hails from Jonesboro, Arkansas. He's a young man that even before Dare to be Great came along, Dare to be great. He also recorded a song which was written about me called I Dare America to be Great. And uh, you'll be hearing a lot about a lot of different songs coming out on the label. So you'll be hearing more about Sound Card as time goes on. This is one of our many operations. We're looking for talent. But before you can get a man to do something in life, you've got to get his attitude right. Now let's talk about attitude a minute. Attitude is a whole eat. You're basically doing right now what you've been trained to do. You can be making 
$5,000 a month, just as easy as $5,000 a year. If you had a $5,000 a month attitude instead of a $5,000 a year attitude. Now let's look at what's happened to you all your life. What made you think the way you think now and why you think you're only worth X number of dollars? Now keep in mind is that thought, Stephen. I'm not talking just about money. Success is not necessarily money. Success is when you're happy doing your thing. Now, in your own business, if you had my outlook and my attitude, you can become the president of your own company, if this was your desire. Now, in the company you now work for, you can be the foreman, you can be the leader, you can be the vice president, you can pick any position. If you knew how to handle your boss, you can get to the top. Now, 80% of you will quit your job because you don't know how to handle your boss, or you don't know how to handle the people who work for you. 80% of you will lose your job and change, not because you're not qualified to come to the top of the company you now work for, but because your attitude cannot stand the pressures of day-to-day -day changes. Now, any jerk can run a machine, because a machine acts just about the same way. You can always get rid of it and replace it part. But a human mind is different, and you got to keep in mind that people change. It depends on how his wife treated him before he left home that morning. It depends on how the man down the street where some jerk almost run over him. He may be a little bit mad about that and take it out on you. Now, when he takes it out on you, if you're not trained to handle this situation, it can hurt you. And therefore, it can throw your whole mind off and make you say things you wouldn't normally see. And the next thing you know, you're mad about nothing and you're fired or either you leave. And the main thing you got to learn is how to handle yourself, number one. How to handle people, number two. If you learn those two things in life, that's about all you really need to know. Now, it's hard to learn how to handle yourself, because we know we never do anything wrong, no. Everybody else is a jerk, ain't they? Now, if you sit out there for the next 20 or 30 minutes and figure out how a jerk like me with a hair lip made it, you ain't gonna learn nothing. I made it, and that's all that's important. I made it because I am what you call intelligently ignorant. I'm too stupid to figure out why it won't work. I've never been in the college. I've never even been in the 10th grade. I stopped the first month in the ninth grade. I completed the 8th grade. And therefore, I don't know how to use a slide rule. And every time somebody tells me something, I don't sit down and put it on the slide rule and figure out why it won't work. Every time I see somebody doing it, I say, you know, if that guy can do it, maybe I can do it. And I immediately figure out the only difference between him and I is he knows something I don't know. That's the only reason one man's making it and you're not our lady, is because of the way they're thinking about themselves. You're working, you're 65 years old in a measly job, and you could be running the company you're working for or way up in the company. And you work all the time and you wonder why. You wait for that gold watch. Because Glenn Turner has a gold watch and I'm 36 years old. And you know what it says? To the greatest guy in the world from Glenn Turner, the greatest guy in the world. <laughs> now, I'm not conceited, I'm convinced. <laughs> there is a difference. If I was conceited, I wouldn't be out here talking to you this evening. I'd be sitting in the chairman of the board seat, what I'm supposed to do. I'm told I'm supposed to be sitting in the Bahamas on a yacht letting somebody else run my business. But I don't believe in this. I believe if I hadn't have been inspired to change my way of thinking, I'd have been peddling sewing machines door to door at this very moment, waiting on my fourth or fifth Cadillac to be repossessed. In five years time, in ten years time, I had three Cadillacs repossessed. I always went down in style, boy. <laughs> I don't mess around with nothing second class. I never can figure out how a guy buy a little old boat wagon and squeeze in it and economize and drive down the road and somebody hits him and it looks like a matchbox folding up. <laughs> when he can put the same amount of energy in figuring out how to make a better person out of himself and learning how to get along with people and he can afford a Cadillac. Most of you will spend more time planning a two-week vacation you will at planning your life. You ever thought about it? How many of you have ever sat down and outlined what I'm going to have next year, what I'm going to have the next year, and the next year, and the next year, and the next year, and 20 years from now where I'm going to be? 
most of you accept the fact that you ain't going to be much better off here right now. In fact, most of you at the age of 65, over 85% of you won't even be worth $600. You depend on Social Security, welfare, or unemployment to take care of you. And this is the way most of us lies in. Because we know that we can take a two-week vacation, everybody does it, but everybody can't be a millionaire, and everybody can't be a success, and everybody can't be happy. In fact, the most of it will never amount to anything. We know it, and we accept it because we've been taught this by our friends and neighbors. Our friends and neighbors don't know any better. They've been taught this also. Because ever since they were four and five years old, their computer has been programmed by other people in the same class as they are. We've been programmed by people making five or ten thousand dollars a year, and we've been told that we can't do it. It's a lie. That's the biggest lie you've ever been told. Most of you will go to your grave with the sweetest music still unplayed. And you'll always say, I got a bad knee, I got a bad back, I'm too fat, I'm skinny, I'm black, I'm blue, I'm green. You'll have all kinds of reasons. There's only one color in any of my corporations. That's not black power, that's not blue power, or yellow power, or white power, it's green power. We know that our system works because any time you can have a black man to go into George Wallace country and the people beg for him to come back again, and they said, if you send him down here, buddy, we're going to get out. He went down, very few showed up, and the next week, it was unbelievable because they started listening to his heart instead of who he was or what color he was or where he was cross-eyed or hair lip. They started listening to man's words. And you turn around and you criticize people that's making it. I have never in my life seen a statue erected to a critic. But the people they criticize, many statues have grown up. We need more people with foresight. We need more vision. We need more love in our heart for one another. And we say, well, that's corny. That's a bunch of junk. It works for me. I'm concerned about people. I have more confidence than people they have in themselves because no matter where you're sitting tonight, listen to me. In the sound of my voice, I believe in you even though I've never met you, and I probably will never see a lot of you. I believe in you because you're created by God Almighty. You're created to have dominion over the face of the earth. You're a leader. You're born to be a leader above all creatures, and you're not doing anything with it. You're criticizing someone else, and you're criticizing the work of God. You're going to bust hell wide open if you continue to do it. It's as simple as that. I never criticize people. I never make fun of people. But I like for people to make fun of me. I like for them to criticize me. And I especially like for them to say it won't work. Because if you're sitting around figuring out how it won't work, you're liable to be passed by a guy making it work. It happens every time. It can be done. Some jerk on the corner filling station station is going to make it work where you couldn't. Why? Well, he's no smarter than you. He thinks he is. Isn't that crazy? The more education you get, the more you think somebody owes you something for nothing. Because you work real hard to get an education. If you took your education, if you got a college degree, and you put it with my outlook and my attitude on life, you can do and earn any type of money. You wouldn't have to have any guarantee. Because a guarantee is a ceiling on your head. A guarantee will never let you, let you reach your potential. You were born to be great. Greatness is what you can become. But you have to associate with daily, not monthly, not weekly, not yearly, with people that are great, people that think great, people that think they're greater than they are. Because we generally become what we think about if we stick to our plan. And you have to outlay a plan for your life. You go to church regularly, you become a good Christian. You get the slacking off, you get the backslidden. And this is what happens to people. You go to the National Guard once a month, you're trained to believe the National Guard's okay. And you believe in the National Guard. And the people in the Army, they act like soldiers because they are soldiers. If you'd have been born in Russia, right now you'd be thinking like a communist. You are today what you think you are. And the reason you're thinking the way you're thinking right now is because of your past environment. 
Most of you that's listening to me right at this moment are not thinking with your brain. Your brain is about the size of a pinhead. You lost it many years ago. It's back behind your left ear somewhere under a bone that medical scientists don't have a name for, so therefore you don't know how to find it. And you know what's happened to your brain, the mass part of it? It's been taken over by friends and loved ones and relatives who mean well, who simply have lost their brain also, that other people are taking over, and they're passing on the same information. You can't do it. It'll never work. Fudge in it. It can't happen to me, and it can't happen to you. It's a lie, but that's what we've been taught. Your brain is used for one thing. I wish I want to. Lord, I'd like to please. That's all it ever does, because that's all the power it controls, is wishing and wanting and praying. And faith without works is dead. I built my companies on the principles and the laws of the Bible. It says if you're doing the others, if you'd have them doing to you. Flint Turner tried to be a success for 10 years in door-to-door -door sales and failed over and over again. I failed because I was interested in making Glenn Turner a new Cadillac. I was interested in getting Glenn Turner a new home and new furniture. When I started teaching other people how to become a success, they in turn traded with me and bought my product and the masses just started to flock into me and they pushed me up to millions and millions and millions of dollars. It's as simple as that. As long as you're self-centered and interested only in yourself, you'll never reach your greatest potential because no one man in this room or no one man under the sound of my voice or lady can ever do anything great on his own. Glenn Turner did not build Turner Enterprises or Jerry to be great or any of the corporations such as Coscott Interplanetary. Glenn Turner built people. And I might slack up on that even. He simply taught people to bring out what they had in them. Because people are wonderful. People are great. People are important. People are the only thing that comes first. I love people. I'm concerned about people. And I win most people over to my side and my way of thinking. Only those that have been brainwashed by society so deep and so hard that they won't bother to look a little longer is the ones we lose. We don't get many crooks in our business because they sit out there with that crooked programmer that's been put in their mind and they figure out what the angle is and they say, it sounds like a con man to me. He's not a saint, he's a con man. I am definitely not a saint and I'm in no hurry to become one. I am a con man. <laughs> kind of like the little boy that was in school. The teacher said, how many of you would like to go to heaven? And everybody but little Johnny raised his hand. He said, little Johnny, don't you go to, want to go to heaven? He said, yes, ma'am, and I thought you was making up a load right now. I am most certainly the biggest con man you've ever laid eyes on because I'm conning people into believing in themselves. Con means confidence in oneself. It's short for confidence if you look it up in the Webster Dictionary. There's three words in the Webster Dictionary and all other dictionaries that ought not to be there. It's if. If a frog had wings, he wouldn't bust his bottom when he hopped. Can't, can't never done anything. And impossible. The thing about doing the impossible is you have no competition. When you throw dirt, you're bound to lose ground. Confidence is a bullfighter who goes in the bull ring with mustard on his sword. Yeah, right. <laughs> I believe in you. No matter where you are, tonight, today, no matter where you are listening to this record, I believe in people. And I pray to God that one day he will grant me the power to reach out and lay my hand on your head and give you instant belief, because you don't have instant belief. You've been hooked, you've been crooked, you've been lied to so many times that you're suspicious minded. And when the right thing comes along, you don't believe it. When I'm in the knock at the front door, you're at the back door looking for four-leaf clovers. 
And when you find it, you think somebody planted it there to fool you. What's the angle? You look for its use. I wish I could slice open your heads, no matter where you are, one at a time. And I can take out your tape that's been programmed into believing you're only worth so much, or you only can have so much confidence. And if I could take over your mind for 30 days, and you do it exactly like I told you, you could earn yourself 5, 10, 15, or 20, or even, you know, you can't imagine how much you can earn. People using a dare to be great philosophy has earned as high as $84,000 in 30 days, an old boy from Alabama. Another one, 36000 You know why he did it? You know why they did it? A little old lady in Oklahoma using this philosophy in her business earned $16,000 in 30 days, where she never earned that kind of money in a year before. Why? Because she was dumb enough to believe what I told her. There's only 2% of you under the sound of my voice that can make an immediate decision at this very moment once you hear the facts. <laughs> The rest of you have got to talk to your lawyer, talk to your doctor, talk to your Aunt Nellie. You have to think it over, and you know what's going to happen? You're going to ask average men and women, because 95% of us are average. You think I can amount to something? Now, your neighbor is smarter than you. If you don't believe it, ask him. <laughs> what do you think he's going to say? He's going to start clicking his computer. And he's been told all his life he's worth five, ten, fifteen, and twenty thousand dollars a year. And he's going to immediately say it can't be done. If he knew how to make this kind of money, he'd be doing it. What are you asking him for? Your boss keeps telling you what a good deal you got working for him. If you got such a good deal, why don't he work for you? You ever thought about it? Success is not in the amount of money you earn, but in the way you think and the way you believe. And if you learn to encourage another person. It's just like giving is better than receiving. If I've only reached one person here tonight, and if I only reach one out of a hundred throughout the United States, Mexico, Canada, Australia, Puerto Rico, England, Belgium, France, and all the countries we're going into this year, I've did more than the average guy. You're not looking at Glenn Turner, or you're not listening to Glenn Turner, You'll listen at the past, the present, and the future. You'll look and listen to a man that once sat in the same seat as you, listen to a similar speech, saying, if I only could believe that about myself, if I could make a speech like that fellow, if I could do that, I could be great too. My knees literally knocked together in talking to 12 people one time in Marion, South Carolina. For five weeks, I earned no money in a business that I'd went into because my friends and my neighbors were laughing. Not laughing because they wanted to hurt me, but because they didn't even understand as much as I did about it. Glenn Turner made it because he couldn't stand the laughing. I have an advantage over you people because I talk funny. You see, I was fortunate enough to have the gift of a hearing. And everybody looked at Glenn Turner there, and if a jerk like that can make it, anybody can make it. And that's an advantage, because then they want to trade with me. They want to buy my courses. And they're right, because if they could believe in themselves as much as I learned to believe in themselves, and it takes time, you don't do it overnight, because it takes you two years in college just to figure out what to major in. How am I going to convince you in 30 minutes or 40 minutes? It's simply not done. I'm no miracle worker. I can't lay hands on your head like Oral Roberts or Billy Graham. If I could, I would. And I'd give every dime I'll ever earn and every dime I've ever made if I had the power to do so. In this modern day and age, we have instant coffee, instant tea, and instant disbelief. That's the reason we never become anything, is because we'll never believe in ourselves. We'll always listen to the mass majority the mass majority of failures at the age of 65, financially, morally, and spiritually. If everybody's making fun of you or criticizing, you know you're on the right track because most of the people ain't got it. If we seem nutty to you, and if we seem like an oddball to you, just remember one thing. The mighty oak tree was once a nut like me. Life battles, 
don't always go to the strongest or fastest man or woman. But sooner or later, the man or woman who wins is the man or woman who first thinks they can. Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, inspired me more than any other book outside of the Bible that I've ever read in my life. When my friends and my neighbors would laugh at me, I'd go back and I'd read that book half the night. And it says, did your friends laugh at you today? I said, yes, they did. Then you're on the right track, it would say. And when my friends quit laughing at me because I was doing good, I had to move to another town so they'd laugh. I like to do things that people are making fun of and laughing at. I like to start new companies. I like to do the impossible because nobody's in my way. It's always amazed me at how I got to graduate from college and get all that brains and go down to an employment office with some tent trade or running it and pay him to hunt him a job. We certainly don't learn much, do we? Unbelievable how stupid we can get in school. You don't use it. You're guilty. You're guilty of taking a wonderful education and beating it into the ground. I had a young man the other day, I said, how long have you been working for that company? He said, ever since they threatened to fire me. <laughs> I asked another young man, I said, uh, why do you go to work every morning? He says, everybody else does. Isn't that a miserable excuse? Aren't you tired of fighting the traffic? Wouldn't you like to make your own decision? I know. You're sitting around waiting on something to turn up. How about beginning with your sleeves? Right. Your computer was told at the age of six that you were great. Honey, you can do anything. Mother believes in you. Mother knows there's no such word as impossible, can't or if. You're great, honey. You're my little darling. Daddy would say, you're daddy's little boy. You're daddy's little girl, honey. You get right in there and do it, sweetie. What would happen? You jerk, you'd do it, wouldn't you? Why'd you do it? Because the big computer told the little computer it could be done. At the age of 25, the same computer said, don't try nothing, you can't do nothing, you jerk. It's amazing how dumb you get from 6 to 25 years old. You ever wonder why, what happened? At the age of 6, everything that big computer is telling you it can be done, it's done, it understands, so therefore it tells you it can be done. Because the information there, when you punch the button and says, can I do it? It says, yes, yes, yes. At the age of 25, he's been trained for one job, one thought. He either hates people, likes people, loves people, or he's halfway one way or the other. It depends on the person. And his information has been programmed differently, and when you say, I'm going to do something, unless he's been through and programmed to believe, unless he's done it, his computer starts saying, no can compute, no can compute. And he immediately says, it won't work. You can't get a better outlook. You don't have a chance. You're black. You're crippled. You're blind. I have a blind instructor. It was pitting dollars, making $40 a week. This young man one day will become a millionaire. Why? Because he's not blind on the inside. He believes in his own ability. He relates to thousands and thousands of people. This Saturday night, he takes my place in a J.C. speech in Lakeland, Florida. Last night, I returned from the J.C. convention, and I witnessed the honoring of the 10 most outstanding young men of America, men under 35 years old, men like Elvis Presley in the entertainment business, the President's press secretary, uh, Lieutenant Governor of Minnesota, uh, missionary, 30 years old, Mr. Cole, from the slums of Hartford, Connecticut. I wish I mentioned a 30-year-old first black man on the city council of Boston, Massachusetts. A 30-year-old black man that didn't sit around and criticize and said it couldn't be done. He didn't protest, didn't march, but went out and did it and earned the respect of both black and white alike. I talked to him. I challenged him to put Dare to be Great in the slum, and he accepted my challenge. One of them stated, 
When I was a boy, I read the comic books. And I was always the hero in the comic book. And when I saw a movie, I was always the hero in the movie. And when I heard a song, I was always a singer. That young man became Elvis Presley. He said, every dream I've ever seen, and every dream I've ever dreamed, and every thought I've had, ever had has come through 10,000 times or more because God has been with me. That was the total sum of a speech. A young man that made it in spite of ridicule, anything. Glenn Turner has been criticized facing the same way. I've been laughed at, I've been made fun of. It's wonderful because when people are making fun of you, that means you're running with the ball and nobody ever tracks on the guy that's not running with the ball. People shoot at number one and I am number one in attitude. You're looking and you're listening to the happiest man that's ever drawn a breath, not because of financial success, it's because I'm able to convert my message and pass it on to millions and millions of people throughout this world. A few moments ago, I talked to the citizens of Mexico that flew in today. I didn't understand their language and I used an interpreter, but I talked from the heart and they felt it. In another hour and a half, I'll be with them in a club, showing them American entertainment. Why do I take time on my one night at home? Why does my wife go along? Because they've come so far. We have to show them we do care. Words are cheap, and the words you hear on this record or the words you hear me in person tonight means nothing. The man or woman has contacted you about becoming great has made a step, a step that 95% of the American people will never make. You were born to be great if you can only believe it. It's as simple as that. In closing, I'd like to tell you a story. An old prospector went out west many years ago to seek his fortune. No gold did he discover, but he had bragged to his friends and told them about all the money he was going to make and he couldn't come home until he became rich. He was a, leading his donkey, which was a bag of bones, across the desert, desert after two years. He was thirsty and he was hungry. And his donkey fell and she died. He crawled along the sand and he knew it was the end. But finally something gave him hope. A piece of metal about three foot long was lying in front of him. It was glittering. He knew it was gold. Finally, it was all over the place. He grabbed a piece of it. And he crawled, and he ran, and he walked, and he almost died, and he reached the nearest town, and he staggered, and he fell, and he passed out. For three days, they nursed him. They fed him. They watered him. They bathed him. But he wouldn't turn loose the metal in his hand. When he gained his senses, he went to the assayer's office. He put it up on the bar and said, that's gold. I made it. Tell me what it's worth. He analyzed it. They put it in some solution, and the assayer turned to him after he did all this and said to him, it's not gold, my son. It's simply a bar of iron worth $5.50. He wouldn't believe it. You're lying to me. You're lying to me. You're going to go out and stake the claim. I will not believe you. It's gold any fool can see. It has to be gold. I've told all my friends that I'm going to be wealthy. I've got to make it gold, even if it's not. Don't you understand? I can't return all. My friends will laugh. And that's the reason most of us never dare to be great, is because we're afraid of our friends laughing if we fail. If you don't go out on a limb, you're never going to get the fruit. He went to another essay office, and the same story occurred. He says, it's not. You're lying to me. Y'all trying to trick me. I know it's gold. And he went to another town. The same story was given to him. But he was so disappointed looking, the essay said, young man, I can tell you how to make it gold if you'll believe me. But you must believe me. You can't say, well, it might happen. You got to believe everything I say and do everything I tell you, and you'll have people that'll try to stop you after you hear it from my word. Just as you listen to me tonight or today, we'll have people that tell you Glenn Turner made it and he was lucky. But you can't, because I once listened to a record that said the same thing. He said, if you go to a factory 10 miles down the road, they make horseshoes. And we learn how to make horseshoes. This same bar of iron will be worth $10 and a half. 
He said, that's not gold. That's not what I want. I have to be wealthy. Don't you understand? I brag. I can't face my friend unless I made it. And he said, if you go 50 miles further down the road, you'll find it is a factory that makes sewing needles. It may take you 10 years or five years. And you listen to the man that knows how to make sewing needles. And then you make that bar of iron in a sewing needle. And that bar of iron will be worth $3,300. He said, that's not enough. That's not gold. I got to be wealthy. Don't you understand? Would you willing to do what I tell you? Are you willing to go over the mountain? Are you willing to stand the people laughing and criticizing you when I tell you how much you can really make out of that bar of iron? Will you believe me? He said, yes, I will. Go 70 miles to the west. It's a hard journey. People will try to stop you. People say you're not cut out that way, that you can't talk to it enough, or you can't have the skill, or you're different. But don't you believe them? Because everyone can make it if he simply learns the secret, and the secret is self-belief. And you learn how to make mainsprings for watches, and that same bar of iron will be worth a quarter of a million dollars. Five fifty, ten fifty is horseshoes. Thirty-three hundred dollars is sewing needle, or a quarter of a million dollars out of the same piece of metal. It's simply how you train and who you listen to and who you believe permanently. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter where you're at tonight or today. Your work is exactly what you're willing to make of yourselves, and no more. From the bottom of my heart, and from my wife, and my three little boys, and my little girl, to your house, and to you, no matter where you may be in the world today, God bless each and every one of you. Thank you.